1. I've worked as night audit for five-ish months in a smaller city for a mid-size hotel. I've never worked in a hotel before, my previous jobs being gas bar attendant, honey extractor, and a janitor. <laughs> so it was a bit of a transition. It hasn't been long, but I already have a few stories. The first one was pretty normal at first. A homeless man was trying to get past me to the rooms, looking for a place to sleep or open doors to take advantage of. I'd kicked him out a few times, each time with a little less patience. One day in particular, he had been removed once and then just kind of stood outside. I keep a bit of an eye on him, but a customer had come up to redeem their VLT ticket, and unfortunately I had to go across the lobby, into the restaurant and lounge to validate it. I made sure to watch him as I went across and managed to get the thing validated and start back before realizing he had come in and was halfway across the lobby. I yelled, Excuse me? As he spotted me coming, I swear he looked disgusted. He kept walking for a few steps, stopped, threw his hands up and yelled, Thank you! before turning around and leaving. After that, I called security to chase him off, and thankfully he didn't come back that night. Another night, though, I was sitting at the desk doing my paperwork and whatnot, and it was after 3 a.m. because the VLTs were off. I hear the front doors open, and in walks a man wearing a clown mask. The mask itself wasn't creepy or anything, but if you see a man walk in at 3 a.m. in just a hoodie and sweatpants, you'd be a little scared too. I sort of panic because at this point I've only been there for maybe two or three months and no one ever mentioned anything like this happening. And by the time I say anything, he's halfway across the lobby. I yell, excuse me, at him, but all he does is toss his hand up in a half wave and yell, yeah, yeah, at me. I radio security immediately, who finds him on the second floor. He gets him to take the mask off and brings him down, and lo and behold, it's the man from before. I don't know why, but it didn't occur to me to talk to my manager about this. I guess I figured since no one was injured or disturbed, it didn't really matter. But the clown mask part was too much for me to just brush past, so I let her know, and guess what? This guy had been banned from the property. Like, completely. Not just a DNR, this guy was not supposed to be anywhere near here. He's been gone for a while now, actually. I'm pretty sure jail. It's a pattern for him, apparently. Jail for a bit. Then he's released, and he starts bugging us again. Then jail for another bit. And on. And on. 2. I decide to stay an extra hour to assist overnight. We have a big group coming, and I didn't want to have her deal with checking in randoms plus a giant tour group. A couple comes to check in, and I do the standard, may I please start off with the photo ID and credit card. The guest goes down to get it and realizes he does not have it with him, and instantly starts arguing with his wife. I'm standing there just kind of shocked and observing. The guest asks me if I can just see the photo of the ID, as he can't find it, I decline, and let him know we need a physical one as per policy. Also, mind you, the Rezo is under his sister's name, so we're already off to a bad start because his name isn't on the reservation. Guest gets upset, starts arguing with his new wife, mind you, and they're going back and forth about the situation. I'm left to stand there again. I let the guest know we can't accept his sister's ID and credit card if she came. They ignored me and continued arguing. Guest starts arguing with me. Guess his ego is hurt from being yelled at by his girl, basically becoming more aggressive with me. I tell him again, no, sorry, it's policy for security reasons and blah blah blah. Last straw for the guest, he snatches his phone out of his girl's hand and as he's calling someone, the wife is now laying it on me, telling me I should be able to make a one-time exception that it was their wedding night, and they only had two hours of sleep. I stick to my guns and say, no, sorry. I've been nothing but polite. Firm, but polite. Finally, this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. 
man just blows up and instantly starts verbally abusing me. F word this, F you, you suck, but with worse words, I tell him calmly. I will not talk to you if you speak to me like this. Guest gets more aggressive and continues berating me more. My coworker has to step in and tell him that I was being kind and to leave. We refuse service due to their actions. Guest refuses and curses at her too. Wife is pleading, but in a Karen way. About how it was my job to go above and beyond. And this means breaking policy, apparently. Security is mentioned, and they still don't leave. Security is called on them, and they are escorted out, but not before he threatens to fight them. Guest requests my name, and I say, mm, nope, as I am not comfortable giving this information out to them. She insisted I had to, and I kept refusing, which she then left claiming she'd write a scathing review or whatever. Rezo was cancelled. Whatever. Next day. I'm now overnight. I work for Chariot. A guest has requested a mobile key, and they're only a member, and last stayed with us like... Oof. A long time ago. So we request them to stop by the desk. Lo and behold, it's them again. And they had the audacity to tell me again that I should have made an exception. Now, you're probably asking why you didn't just refuse them service again, Mr. Sourdough. It was because your boy is mentally ill, and another verbal abuse tirade back-to-back -back like that would have ended me. Anyways, I just needed to type that all out. Hope you enjoyed the read. Thank you for listening, you beautiful hotel staff. We don't deserve the crap we get thrown at us. Three. Seasoned travelers know where they're going and what they need and want. Their phone calls are quick, professional, and productive. I work above property loyalty, serving the top tier. I verify their identity, get their request, and follow up via email. The little niceties abound. Some guests earn top status almost by accident. Our house flooded, insurance is reimbursing us for staying in the hotel since last September. They don't understand the perks and benefits, they call rarely. But with a weird request about the copy machine in the hotel's business center or some such. Non-members who rarely travel call our company on the 1-800 number. Remembering those phone calls brings me back to the psychic pain. <sighs> the guests may never have stayed in a hotel before. They don't know what they want or need or even where they're going. I got one of those calls today. The bad call that made me desperately appreciate all the good ones. She said I was the fourth person she'd been transferred to. She was already frustrated. She said she and her husband never travel, yet they were indeed top tier. But now they want to use their points for a hotel flight car package. Sure. My company does that. Through a contracted third party, not me. She couldn't figure out our hotel or loyalty website. She already tried the hotel reservation, which used up all her points save a pittance. So, this is not part of the package she wants. She didn't know which airport to fly to to get to her destination resort. I said I was eager to help. I asked sincerely whether she was familiar with Google Maps. She said she could never get a straight answer out of Google. This gave me insight to her overall life experience. I found that her resort was equidistant from two international airports. I shared the codes with her. Next, she had great difficulty logging into our hotel loyalty website. I sent a password reset to the email address on file, she asked me to send it to a different email address. I said I don't have that option. It's about security for crying out loud. And she called me a liar. She said that the last agent she spoke with did it. She refused to believe that from my company computer I could not log into her loyalty account online to walk her through the steps to book a flight. Um, we don't book flights here. 
Remember? I advised that she no longer had enough points to book a flight. I suggested that to have enough points, possibly, for the discounted package she wants, she should cancel her reservation and begin anew with the correct department. This really made her mad. I tried to show empathy, but every time I said something like, I understand your frustration, she would raise her voice, I'm not frustrated! Why on earth would I cancel my reservation? I've already gone through talking with so many people just to get that part done. Now I need to book a flight. Her remaining points amounted to the equivalent of approximately 30 bucks. But I didn't say that for fear of annoying her further. I reiterated that she did not have enough points to book a flight. I suggested what I find more effective personally... I transfer my points to my frequent flyer account and book directly with the airline. Nope. She wants to do it the hardest, worst way. And I was being pass-aggressive? I asked her to please hold on while I called for assistance. I just wanted a colleague to confirm I hadn't missed something. Nope, it's still hotels that we sell here. If the guest wants to book a hotel flight car package, the only way to do it is through that contracted third-party website or phone number mentioned earlier. I went back to the caller and said that I have a website and phone number to share with her. She was not having it. She refused to let me give it to her. Every time I opened my mouth, she said, Ma'am, ma'am, that's not what I asked you. You just don't want to help me. You're being pass-aggressive for no reason. What is your name? I spelled out both my first name and my last name. She said, I'll just hang up and call back to get someone else. Clearly that's what you want me to do. And she was gone. Phew. I sent a self-reporting email to my manager. I didn't do anything wrong, but it was not my best 25-minute phone call. I never want my boss to hear about me from a guest. I prefer to tell him myself. 4. I was on an evening DM shift at my hotel. Just a normal, as much as you can get, Thursday evening with no big events happening at the hotel. It gets to around 8.30pm, and I get a call from the emergency phone in our pool. A guest is called down as there is a massive turd floating around the pool, and she thought she better let us know. I was extremely relieved as it wasn't someone drowning, and advised the guest that we would have to close the pool as we didn't have maintenance in at the time to perform a proper clean of the pool. Anyway, myself and another staff member went upstairs and closed the pool off for the evening. We usually closed it at 9pm, so it wasn't the end of the world. We put the cover on and disabled the sliding door to the entrance so that guests couldn't walk in. Fast forward about an hour. I have a guest and her daughter, who was probably five or six max, in their bathers, come to the front desk complaining that the pool was closed. I advised that it was now 9.30pm, and that we close the pool at 9 p.m. as per hotel policy. She wasn't having a bar of it. She started yelling at me and insisting that the only reason they were staying at the hotel was to use the pool. I apologized and repeated that we always close the pool at 9, and it is clearly signposted on the door. She has a bit more of a tantrum, but ends up storming off to her room. Or so I thought. Five minutes pass by, and I catch something moving in the pool room on the cameras. It's the lady and her daughter. She has managed to brute force her way through the pool door, and is now pulling the cover off the pool. I managed to catch the moment she saw the surprise waiting for her from earlier, and she whisks her daughter up and proceeds to come straight back to the front desk. She starts questioning why the pool was closed, and asked if it was because there was a pool in there. 
I was quite shocked about the fact that she had broken into the pool and brought the conversation back to the pool being closed at nine, and which she shouldn't have tried entering in the first place. She tried gaslighting her daughter into saying she wouldn't care about the floater, but ultimately I dug my heels in, and they eventually left the desk and didn't go back to the pool. What an interesting time to be on. 5. I'm fairly new to front desk work, and have only been at my job for a couple of months. It's an independent hotel operated by a board of directors, they're idiots, in a beach town. A few months ago, around an event weekend in the spring, we got complaints of a septic and sewage smell. It was in the lower rooms first, then traveled its way to the second and third floor. Nobody could figure out why. My fellow desk agent told guests it was due to jellyfish washing up on the beach. Wrong. GM said it was due to hydrant flushing. What? It went away. Management breathed a sigh of relief until it came back again and again and again. We've gotten numerous reports over the span of three months. It's in our reviews that the place has a smell. Countless refunds were issued. Plumbers were called and sent away because the quote was too big. Three weeks ago, maintenance dug up the floor in the lower room and found something. A pipe was spewing toilet water when the toilet in the next room was flushed. It's been happening for... months? Maybe even longer. They were put out of order. People were called and nothing has been done. The place still stinks. Last Sunday, check out. I arrive at my 8am shift. 8.05, a guest from the lower floor walks up with his phone out. Never a good sign. He mentions the room above him went to shower. He heard a bloop 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 and checked his bathroom. Human wastewater is coming through the pipes into his bathtub. This was inevitable. It's happened before, according to my co-workers. I immediately tell him maintenance will be up there, and I head toward their office. I then go to the head of housekeeping. She tells me that every room on that floor up to the 10th room will be affected. She was right. I call my GM to give her the heads up. She tells me I need to give courtesy calls. I am calling guests at 9am, telling them to check out early because human crap is going to come up through their pipes. I'm too late. Third room comes up. They didn't answer when I called. To tell me their entire bathroom floor is flooded with poop water. There's toilet paper in it. It's definitely human waste. It's so embarrassing to have guests tell me about the smell like I don't already know. And it's mortifying having to call people to warn them poop will be coming up through the pipes in their room any second, if it hadn't already. The rooms are closed off. Guests leave. That day arrivals are upgraded to better rooms and housekeeping is sent in to clean human poop with no protective gear. Monday the rooms are opened up and ready to rent. Plumber was never called. Nobody was ever called. I can handle rude guests. I can handle demanding owners. But there's nothing that kills you more than pretending to a guest that you didn't know about a septic smell and you'll pass it on. Knowing nothing will be done. And seeing rooms that are known to have human waste come up through the pipes get rented out. Hey everybody, Halfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Kawahu, episode 149. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, please hit the like button and share the video. If you'd like early access to these videos, get that by supporting me on my Patreon page, which is linked for you in the description. Support me there for as little as a dollar or more a month, and you get all the videos at once on a Monday. You'll also find a link there to the Hellfreezer merchandise store on Teespring, in addition to a link to the Hellfreezer Discord. 
If you really liked today's video, you can leave a tip for that by hitting the heart with a dollar sign underneath the video. Although that, and none of that is ever required, but I very much do appreciate it, and thank you kindly if you choose to do so. Okay, no other bits and bobs today, so let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... If you could choose between tea-flavoured coffee or coffee-flavoured tea, which would you pick? I think I'd probably go for the tea-flavoured coffee, because... I think that'd be an interesting, the mix of, presumably, coffee with tea. I'm not sure it would work quite as well the other way around. But do let me know what you think in a comment below. And before we go, let's have the answer of the day from a previous video. And this one comes from Kuahu 102 And this was about your favourite way to warm yourself up in the winter time. I was probably quite cold when I came up with that question. And today's answer comes from Donna Michelle Rishi. I make a nest out of blankets in the couch so I am surrounded. My husband helps place on me sometimes. It's how he started calling me pretty face because my face was the only thing showing. Thank you very much for your answer, Donna Michelle. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.